Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm very happy to be here talking about Sage Video. Many of these collections throughout the past few years, really as Sage um, has started creating the video collections, and so it's something very near and dear to my heart. Um, and so today, what we'll be talking about is the video editorial journey. Who we are in video editorial, what we're doing, and then also um, just a little behind the scenes of how we do it. So starting first with who are we? Um, who are these wizards behind the curtain, right? So we can answer this in a couple of ways, actually. The first thing to note, really, is that developing our video collections truly takes a village. So you might recognize this um, photo from Angie's slides earlier. And just to give some context to this, this photo was taken last December in our DC office. And it is one of our video working days, which is what we like to call um, this annual meeting that we all have. And basically everyone at Sage who is involved in Sage Video gathers for a day or two and we just discuss what's going on with video, what's the health of the product, what, how can we innovate, um, that sort of thing. What's the, what's the feedback that we're getting and how can we implement that? And so this was just this past year. And just to point out some of the, the active players in the team. So we have our product managers here um, on the left. We have some representatives of our digital production team who are involved in um, collaborating with us here in editorial on the pre-production process and then also filming the actual content, so the production process, and then of course the post-production process, so the editing, the implementing graphics and visuals in our videos and making sure that they're beautiful and usable videos for the collections. Also, um, editorial members are there, members of the, the team that I sit on. Um, Publishing Technologies is the team that makes sure that our platform is working um, correctly and quickly and in a way that's efficient. And then of course our sales and marketing teams. These are people who are out in the field who are working with our users and our customers. And so it's so valuable to have their input and their insights so that we can then weave in those insights into our products as we create them. So going just one step further, um, so this is, these are the members of our video editorial team. Um, up at the top, Elsa Dan, she is based in our London office, and she works on our research methods video collections. Just to the right on the top is Danny Costa. He's based in Toronto. He is our licensing editor, so works very closely with um, the rest of us acquisitions editors on um, identifying licensors and, and working with us on making sure that we um, get that content in and on time. Michael Carmichael on the bottom left is our video publisher. So he really um, helps breathe life into the Sage video products and is just very proactive about making sure that our, our um, resources that we create are pedagogically sound and, and innovative and, and useful for the student, the faculty, and the researcher. And then here on the bottom right, this is our product manager, Yolanda Matthews. She's based in our DC office. So as you can see, just this one meeting, we have someone from London, two from Toronto, um, one from DC. I was on that call um, based here in Thousand Oaks, California. So it's a very global team. Um, and we're, this is what an average day looks like or an average morning spanning those time zones. Often we're, we're meeting on blue jeans meetings, much like we are today and discussing some of the, the things that are, um, coming up for us. So this particular meeting, I, I think I should mention is, uh, we're discussing metadata. You can see how serious we are and how, um, thoughtful we're being here with, based on our facial expression. So we know that you as librarians routinely deal with metadata. And so I thought I would just show this particular image because um, we also are dealing with metadata too and making sure that it is um, as accurate and accessible as possible. Okay, so on to the next step. What are we doing? So here's just one little taste of the things that we do here in video editorial. You'll notice our publisher, Michael Carmichael, here on the left. He's holding a, a script, basically, of interview questions, and is in this particular photo, he's at a conference filming 
um, someone for the psychology video collection. It's just one of the hats that we wear here in the editorial. And I first just want to start off with what we are working on currently. So these are the collections that are coming out very soon. Um, and I'll just walk you through them and then we'll kind of work backward from there. So January 2019, so wow, like in six more months, we'll be launching a data science video collection. And so that sits within our research methods video collection um, suite of, of online products. And that collection will cover big data and how to analyze it. And so the filming for this is underway. And in fact, Elsa, that person who is on the top left of that um, previous photo, um, she's, she's responsible for this collection and she was actually just recently filming at the Pew Research Center. Um, so we're really excited and looking forward to seeing the content that she's um, filmed there. Then just about six months after that launch, we'll be launching a brand new social work video collection. So that is my baby for now. That's what I'm working on currently. Um, and that'll be spanning the full curriculum of the social work department. Also gearing up for some filming at conferences coming up as well as in our offices and some on-site filming. So really excited about the content there. Um, and then you'll see we have two updates just after that. So business and management and then media and communication. So these collections were launched previously. So media and communication launched in 2015 and business and management launched in 2016. And we're committed to refreshing that content routinely. So since these two collections have been out for a couple of years, we're aiming to add 10 more hours of content to each of these collections. And so you'll see with um, subsequent years, we'll be adding updates to our other collections um, as well. So um, we can talk about what those collections are um, in just a moment. And then you'll see January 2020 is leadership. So we're very excited about this one in particular because it's our first interdisciplinary video collection. Um, so again, this is something that came up in one of our video working days as we were all, all gathered. Um, we were talking about what if we piloted a video collection that wasn't just for one specific department. And so leadership is the answer to that. So very excited to launch that and see what happens. Okay, so I would mentioned before I would, I would show you what all we've done so far. Um, so these are the collections that we've launched. So this is a um, screen grab of our platform. And you'll see in blue at the bottom all of the collections that have come out so far. So to kind of answer what we do, just thought I'd show you what we've done. And then to take that a step further, here's the actual roadmap. Of, of what we've done so far. So again, I had mentioned those 2015 collections, how we're adding those updates. And so you'll see in subsequent years, we'll be adding updates as well to the psychology, the political science, um, methods, sociology and criminology. Um, and then also earlier this year, we launched a practical research and academic skills collection, as well as updates to the education and counseling collection. So those were the other two that had launched in 2015. So I also just wanted to mention here as well that SAGE, as a publisher of social science context, we've published text and reference materials and journals in all of these areas for over 50 years. And so our video collections are an extension of that. All right, so I'd like to go one step further and show you some of the content that we've created thus far. So we have a few samples from a sociology collection here. I know in blue jeans, the playback won't be great. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll play this video and what I'll do is I'll narrate what's happening because I um, get a sense that the, the audio um, might not be the greatest and also uh, there might be some slight delays. So I will narrate as we go. Oops. One moment. Okay, so for the sociology collection, it was very important to include this man, Earl Babby, huge pioneer in sociology research. So we were very excited to film him and pick his brain about why he was inspired to do research. This is an example of one of our tutorial videos on sexual scripts for women, actually. So this um, particular researcher is talking about 
cougars and what cougar means and and she's she's talking about the show cougar town here and and how changing sexual scripts for women um have occurred over the years kind of speaks for itself this is an animation talking about theory This particular video is about the collective conscience. And so we've created this custom graphic um, overlaid with the researcher talking about this theory. This is some in practice content showing um, an organization um, that raises awareness and spreads advocacy. And then here's another custom graphic. So this particular video is about the effects that Hurricane Katrina had on children. And then again, another big pioneer in the sociology field and also a sage author, George Ritzer. Here he's talking about McDonaldization, his term that he's most um, known for. Again, another graphic that's really showing data from a specific research. This woman is talking about gender and work. And then again, this example is supplementing what she's saying about different entry salaries for men and women. And then here's another in practice video. Um, it's an organization who promotes awareness about dementia and people living with family members who have um, dementia and how to best support them. So here they were surveying people in a mall. Okay. So I wanted to share this particular clip with you because it really shows the span of types of video that we create, um, our commitment to making sure that we have all different um, types of topics that are covered throughout the curriculum, um, different types of content, so tutorials, case studies, in practice films, and just have that variety of content for the variety of learning needs. Okay, so how do we do it? The, the age-old question, right? So I'm recording audio in this photo. This is me. Um, this is taken, actually I took this, a little selfie, because <laughs> so I was so excited to do this work. And this was just last summer that I took this. So I'll shed a little bit of light on why I'm recording audio in just a bit. Um, and I just wanted to walk you through kind of how we develop our video collection. So one of the first things that we do when we decide we're going to create a brand new video collection is we start to develop and recruit an editorial advisory board. Um, so these are often sage authors or editors or contributors. And there are sounding boards throughout the whole development of the process because each video collection takes um, at least one year to, to develop. So throughout that year, we're picking their brains, we're having conversations with them, we're meeting up with them at conferences. And, um, and this is just to make sure that the content that we are creating ourselves, the content that we're licensing is pedagogically sound. And so we look for diverse areas of expertise as we're recruiting these editorial advisory boards so that we can rely on those different areas. So let's say I'm looking at um, licensed content for sociology that deals with gender and work. I would go to our ed board member whose specialty is that. Um, so these photos are taken at different conferences throughout the past couple of years. Um, on the left here, this is me and Kelly Renison. She teaches at University of Colorado Denver and she was one of our ed board members for the criminology and criminal justice collection. And here we are spreading the word. This, was, this conference was in the fall just before the criminology collection debuted. And so she was so kind as to um, talk about her experiences working with SAGE, working on SAGE video, and uh, really helping us get the word out. Then here on the right, this is Russell Schutz. He teaches at University of Massachusetts, Boston, and he was one of our sociology video collect, or I'm sorry, sociology um, editorial advisory board members. Um, and again, his expertise is in homelessness. So whenever we had any content dealing with homelessness in the sociology field, he was such a great resource. And he's an, an author that's been here uh, uh, working with Sage for for many years, and so he's such such a great resource as we developed that collection. So the second thing that we do as we're developing our editorial advisory board 
is we develop a taxonomy for each collection. So I just included these screenshots because it shows how much thought goes behind developing the taxonomy. So all the terms that we're going to be um, creating. And so the taxonomy, once it's finished, serves as a blueprint for the content that we want to cover. So it's, it's kind of how we determine what to cover um, and how much to cover. So you'll see many different iterations um, here on the left. Um, this is a folder that I was keeping track of, and you'll see there's Edboard feedback comments. There's comments from our sociology textbook editor here. Um, we'd also talk to their marketing, marketing manager to make sure we had all the course areas covered. And so it took a few months to really get this down to exactly how I wanted it before we got to our final draft. Um, so we're often, as we're shaping this, not only talking to all of our, our internal members and our editorial advisory board members, um, we're also looking at syllabi, we're looking at course pages, we're talking to the marketing managers to understand what the trends are, we're going to conferences and, again, getting an understanding of what the needs are in the classroom or for research. Um, and then, of course, we also go on campus, right? Those, that face time and those conversations with the um, end users is very beneficial. OK, and then here's the final version of the sociology taxonomy. So it ends up um, right here on the platform again. So you can see how, how it kind of started um, in its various phases and then it, in its final stages. All right, so once we have our advisors in place, once we have our topics in place and our content goals in place, we then take it to the streets. So just wanted to walk you through some of the ways that we gather our content, some of the ways that we acquire the content, right? So here are two ways. Um, we go on campus and we also film in-house in, in our various offices. So just um, to talk through these campus photos. Just last summer, we went to California State University at San Bernardino and partnered with this husband and wife team of um, faculty members there who taught um, uh, counseling at CSUSB. And they had actually recruited some of their recent uh, grad students who had just graduated last year and recruited them to be clients. And we got real stories from these women and uh, filmed these counseling sessions. So at first, we had talked to them about, oh, maybe this could be a role play situation if you're not comfortable. And they, it was very profound that they were actually happy to share their personal stories and and spoke to the, their uh, former um, teachers here uh, as if there were no one else in the room. But as you can see, there were plenty of us in the room filming and making sure audio was good. And, um, and it, it was just a beautiful day of filming. So that's one way we acquire um, content. And then in-house, these are some of our producers here in our Thousand Oaks office and then in our London office. We set up studio spaces around our offices and, and invite filming participants um, in to film with us, which is always so fun. We're actually planning to do some of this in-house filming for social work in the next couple of weeks. So another way uh, that we um, film conference, another place, uh, or I'm sorry, film content is at conferences. Um, because many of the leading minds in the social sciences attend academic conferences, we go to them, right? So we try to make it easy. And so what we do is we set up a pop-up studio and coordinate with local vendors and film there, right there, in most cases in the conference hotel. So these photos are from Academy of Management in Atlanta last year. So we have um, our producer from DC, we have our um, camera person in the room. This, this um, photo on the right here, she, was, she had just finished her very first uh, video. She had never been filmed before. She was really excited to share information about her research. And that was her celebrating her first take. She was like, I got through it and I'm feeling good. And so I thought um, that kind of celebratory photo just kind of says it all. Another way that we acquire content is we hire vendors because um, we want to make sure that we can kind of scale up our content, right? And so here are some photos that our vendors have applied or sent to us. And it really shows, again, the organization and really all the work and planning that goes into, <laughs> into all of the filming. So as an editor, I'm in constant touch with vendors. In fact, I just had two vendor calls yesterday for social work. Um, and so this is just one of one of the examples, or these photos are some examples of 
of how we keep ourselves on track, how the vendors keep themselves on track. And um, that, again, is another really kind of exciting way to gather content. So animations is another kind of avenue for content. And this is a, a newer type of, of content that we're creating. So we work with subject matter experts to create these scripts. So what you're seeing on the left here is one of them. And so they'll write the content and then our um, production team, as well as our editorial team, will come up with some animations to supplement that content. And then we'll work with vendors to create the animated versions of them. So as you might recall that photo of me recording audio, um, that was for some of these animations. So not only am I behind the scenes in many cases, interviewing people and helping develop some of these scripts like you see here, I'm also um, in some of the videos um, and you can hear my voice. And finally, last but not least, licensed, as I had mentioned, um, licensed content is also how we um, gather content and what we include in the collection. So you might recall Danny Costa from photos or from slides before. Um, and he is our licensing editor and he's our go-to for this licensed content. And um, I've included here just a few of the providers that we've worked with over the past few years. So you'll see that we partner with commercial licensors as well as societies, and in some cases, universities. And I think really I'd be remiss if I didn't really show you, um, again, the, in terms of behind the scenes, all the content tracking that goes in place. So while we're um, organizing filming on campus and filming at conferences and filming in house and working with Danny on licensed content and working with subject matters on subject matter experts on animation scripts, we're making sure that we're we're tracking all of those various sources. And we keep a very close eye on it. So every week, we update um, spreadsheet, spreadsheets just like this to make sure that we have a good balance to see how on track we are with different types of video, um, whether that's you know tutorial, case study, and practice interviews, documentaries, or whether it's original versus licensed content, um, which region it comes from, if it's exclusive or non-exclusive. So just to show that we're very committed to making sure that our content is very balanced and that it stays on track. So that is the scoop. I um, am very curious to hear what your thoughts and ideas are um, just on any, any of the above. So you've gotten these insights on how we develop these collections and would love to know if you have any kind of feedback on upcoming topics that I shared with you previously you have any ideas for these areas or if there's anyone that you feel like would be um, happy to be involved with these from like an advisor perspective or from a filming participant perspective if you have any faculty members in, in mind. Um, and I also am very curious to know if you have any requests for future collections. Again, we're constantly having that conversation is what is next? How can we keep innovating? What can we do to make this resource the most usable and just reliable resource as possible. So we'll be setting up a survey to ask you all of these questions. I've included my contact information here below. Feel free to contact me directly. Should you have any questions or comments, I'm happy to talk with you.